Hey, I'm Andrew and we're continuing our series on pairing Crocoblock with AI builders to ship sites faster, without losing control. Today we're building a board games directory. WordPress plus Jet Engine store everything in a custom content type on the backend and Bolt AI Builder powers the front end. Expect to see flexible filters, a backend switch to decide which products are exposed on the front end, and clean pagination. If this helps, tap like, drop a comment, and subscribe. It keeps the series rolling. I'm building a directory with products that are also available on Amazon. This time it's board games. In WordPress, I set up a custom content type called board games with a few practical fields. Name and description text area fields, price number field, age group and genre select fields with several select options in each. A discount select field with yes no options. This will act as our backend switch for what's allowed to reach the front end. Image, a media type field where the value is stored as URL, which is easier to send via REST than attachments. And link field, storing the Amazon product URL. I've already added several items, so we have real data to work with on the front end. Next, we'll wire the backend to Bolt via the REST API. In the CCD settings, I enable register get items item REST API endpoint. That creates two URLs, a list endpoint and a single item by ID endpoint. For this build, I only need the single item URL, and I'll drop it into the Bolt prompt later, so product detail pages can fetch by ID. I also open parameters overview to copy the exact field names and indicate them in the prompt. For the listing pages, we'll skip the generic CCD list. Instead, I'm creating a jet engine query, giving it a name, choosing a custom content type query as the type, and registering its own REST endpoint. This query approach gives more possibilities by carrying granular logic for what should be shown, including which products will be available and by setting rules for our future filters and pagination. After enabling the register REST API endpoint toggle, we'll see new endpoint URLs that will be used in the prompt for the Bolt AI Builder. Now we'll add query arguments, which will be used to create filters on the front end and filter out products even before that. I'm adding name for name search, from and to for the minimum and maximum price for the future price range filter, age group for filtering by age group select, genre for similar filter by its dedicated field. The name search and price query arguments don't require default values. However, the arguments connected to select filters do. So for both the age group and genre arguments, I input all available options this means the products with any of these options will be available for display once we finish setting up the query. Below we also get an example REST API endpoint URL with these arguments attached. I'll include it in the prompt so Bolt knows how to apply these arguments to filters. Now it's time to connect the arguments to the CCD fields so filtering actually works. In the content type query section, I choose my content type, then scroll to query and add a new condition. For each thing that I want to filter, name, price, age group, genre, I point the condition at the right field, choose how it should be compared, and tell it to read the value from the query argument I created earlier, via the query variable macro. For age group and genre, I map them to their fields and set the comparison to in the list. That's perfect for select style filters, and if a user picks multiple options on the front end, an item will show up as long as it matches any of them. In the value, I use query variable and select the matching argument. For name search, I use a like match operator 
so partial titles work and typing part of the game's name is enough to find it. For price, I add two rules to the same field. One says price is greater than or equal to the minimum and the other says price is less or equal to the maximum. One important rule. Tick exclude this clause from the query if the dynamic value is empty for every filter. If someone hasn't touched a filter yet, it won't break anything or narrow results by accident. This feature is available in Jet Engine 3.7 and later versions. Finally, I add one more condition for the discount field. I set the operator to equal and instead of dynamic value, I simply type yes. So only discounted items make it through to the front end. With the backend done, I prepare the prompt for Bolt. Instead of writing it from scratch, I personally prefer to ask ChatGPT to structure it. I pass the query endpoint URL, the single item endpoint, my CCD fields, the filter arguments and some details on layout and goals. The bonus of doing it this way is that ChatGPT often adds the obvious UX bits that an AI builder and I might miss like a clear all filters button, a back to the list link on the single pages, sensible loading states and image handling nodes. And when I say include typography and a color scheme, it turned that into clear editable instructions, so it's easy to swap fonts and colors if I have a specific plan in mind. After a short time, Bolt opens a working preview. The site is on the right and a control panel is on the left. There I can review the prompt, see what I understood and add a follow-up with general instructions. Or I can use an inspector tool to point to elements that I want to modify further. Let's go into a full screen preview mode. The preview already hits the basics I asked for. Sidebar filters, a clean grid for cards and a modern minimal look. Filters work together with end logic between them, meaning products have to match each filter to be visible. Meanwhile, there's an OR logic within filters. So when I select two options within a genre selector, we'll see items that match either option. The list updates live and a single page includes all the details about products with a link to an Amazon store. There are also some nice UX touches out of the box, like hover states, tidy badges and sensible loading states. You'll also notice the layout is responsive. So when I open DevTools and drag the viewport, columns step down as the width shrinks. And at narrowest tire, the cards, their content and the filters reflow neatly to fit. Could it be refined further? Sure, but this level of responsiveness took very little effort from me. With lots of products, we need to limit items per page and add page navigation. So let's do that. Pagination depends on how you fetch data. If you were using the row CCT list endpoint, you'd rely on its native limit and offset parameters. But since we're using a jet engine query, we'll create and use a custom offset argument plus a fixed item per page count. In the board games query, add a query argument called offset and set its default to zero. Then in the query section, set number to how many items you want to display per page, like 8. In the offset field, type a special offset macro, which has no picker like many other macros, so it needs to be inserted manually. What we just did is set show items per page and set the query arguments to offset 0 items on page 1, 8 times 1 on page 2, 
8 times 2 on page 3 and so on. Now I'll add tiny follow-up prompt for Bolt, where I tell it there's an offset parameter to switch pages, our backend returns 8 items per page, and the total count comes from the jetquery total response header which is sent along the JSON code in the REST API request. Bolt can use that to calculate how many pages to render. After I add that prompt, the preview refreshes and pagination shows up. The list displays 8 games per page and I can hop between pages with the controls. Now you've got a working demo in Bolt. From here, refine it with the visual editor or on paid plans the code editor. Tweak styling, add features, improve UX or drop in your own content. When you're ready to go live, export the project, connect your domain and plug your Amazon affiliate IDs or sponsored links. The win with this stack is speed and control. Bolt delivers a clean, responsive front end fast while Jet Engine handles the serious data work. With Query Builder, you can orchestrate what appears where across multiple sites, filter it, automate it, and keep it synchronized. That's it for today. If this helped, like, comment, and subscribe. Next up, we'll take the AI integration further with smarter features and richer interactivity. See you there.